While most Americans recognize the role good health plays in their quality of life, many fail to see quality of life as a precursor to good health. Poverty, location, the water we drink, the food we eat, the air we breathe, access to health care, educational attainment, racism, these and other social determinants affect our health. So much so that zip code is often a better predictor of future health than genetic code. Since 2001, the Medical University of South Carolina's Public Information and Community Outreach Initiative and its many partners have delivered hundreds of programs in support of healthy communities nationwide. Through community leaders' institutes, made-for-television dialogues, and national conferences on health disparities, the Medical University and its partners have expanded the definition of community health to include the relationship between human health, environmental quality, environmental justice, and economic development. This, in turn, has intensified programmatic focus on the social determinants of health. Here's a sampling of panelists' comments during the Made for Television dialogue entitled, Our Nation's Health, a focus on social determinants, co-produced with South Carolina Educational Television in 2013. Seventy percent of whether you will have good health is often dependent on things outside of direct medical care. That really makes the social determinants an extremely important and relevant issue. Well, really, if we take a social determinants lens, those factors that determine well-being are community factors, whether it's housing and the quality of housing, the exposures to lead, uh, the food, the access to quality food, the quality of the air that one breathes. These factors come together at a community level. You could take a perspective from an economic development perspective, and you can see that poverty is a major element in the health of people at home. And so when you talk about the ability of individuals to purchase healthy food, to put gas in a truck and go 300 miles round trip to get to health care, or you can look at the impact of, say, climate change on subsistence living. When we talk about the environment, what we're really talking about is the environment as a cultural and religious resource. The environment is part of this, this social determinants conversation because um, we recognize that we can do better. There's technology out there to help us reduce some of the pollution. Um, we can think about parks, open space in cer certain communities. Some communities, you know, you, you go out and it's maybe immigrant populations or other low-income areas. They didn't realize that there was a river or an ocean beyond some of the industrial areas that they see at the waterfront. For many in our community, there's the uh, mistaken impression that Asian Americans are healthier than, than everyone else or richer, richer than everyone else or have higher educational attainment. But in fact, when you really, um, really separate out different co uh, communities from different countries, you can see that there really are large differentials. We also have a lot of different health challenges. Um, such as five times the rate of cervical cancer in Vietnamese women that is compared to white women, um, rates, high rates of diabetes among Pacific Islanders, and then over half of the people with hepatitis B are Asians. Um, and all of these things are preventable or treatable if there's access to care. I'm glad that the word race has found its way into the social determinants paradigm, but I really think it should be modified to racism. Because race, we know, is a, is a social construct. It really doesn't exist biologically. But we have had this longstanding belief in uh, valuing or devaluing human beings based on their physical characteristics, and that's racism. Health is where you live, work, and play. I'll say this many, many times. Health is where you live, work, and play. And if you embrace that concept, then you realize that education has to be much broader than just focused very narrowly in a medical discipline. We really do have to step back as a country and recognize that it is in our nation's best interests to make dramatic changes 
in the social determinants, in the sense that if we just take food, we've created a food system that makes the cheaper food available and it's not healthy. You know, so how do we recognize that making access to fresh fruits and vegetables the norm, to make the good choice the easy choice? These are policy decisions that affect us at a state and a national level. Access is different for different people in different communities. Um, and we, we all often say that you can hold a public hearing and just because no one showed up doesn't mean that people don't care. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how to meet people where they live and how they're living. I think that if we had more legislation and political correctness on how to treat people, mm -hmm. uh, someone said on the panel, we see people as deserving and undeserving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people feel in this country if you're in poverty, it's because you choose to be in poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, people who have pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps look down sometimes at people who don't have boots. And so they're saying, if I did it, you could have done it. So if you're not doing anything, it is your fault. We need to stop treating people as if they're poor. I see people day in and day out who are far more skilled and resilient than, than I am and are able to battle all of the odds. And I think that we have to be able to qualify poverty on different levels. And they might be very culturally rich or much, culture, much more culturally rich than I am. But until we, we begin to honor people and honor their life, their life histories and what they're doing, I don't think that we will ever get there. I don't think we'll be able to move beyond the racism. Well, there really does have to be a, a real paradigm shift in our understanding of what health means. The social determinants frame is a big step in that direction, but we also have to go further and acknowledge that health, we are generally, with, with some exceptions, healthy most of the time. Yeah. We get in the way of that with, with, yes, the choices that we make, but also the choices that we have. Despite the fact that Latinos are the most likely to be uninsured, they've got some of the lowest incomes and lowest educational um, attributions in terms of a population, low socioeconomic status, low access to health care, and perhaps the lowest. And yet Latinos live two, over two years longer than whites and over seven years longer than African Americans. Mm -hmm. If I were the nation, I would be studying to see how do Latinos do this despite not having all of these resources. The ability to have voice as an individual and as a community and really bring that to the attention of policymakers at the municipal level, at the state level, and even at the federal level really made a difference in not only bringing um, empowerment forward, people's voices forward, but also really making changes in their communities that really affected their health and well-being. I think you need the people that you are targeting at the table prior to you designing and delivering programs so they can feel a part of it and have some control in it. And sometimes I don't even like this word empowerment. Sometimes to me it's an arrogant term that I can empower someone without respecting the power that they already have and the control they have on their own lives. The best we can do is to facilitate an environment that's empowering. And so when we're moving forward within Latino communities, and we at National Council of La Raza, we work with 300 community-based affiliates across the country. And working with these promotores groups or leaders, natural community leaders, gives us a way to, they're the experts. We come in only to facilitate. We only, and, and I really love working with promotores because unlike traditional health programming, interventions, research, we don't go in and do an intervention and then pull out. Those resources and skill sets stay right there. Well, I think you have to be honest, open, and caring, and let people know that you really care about them and so you can instill hope with them. Uh, and, and when you do that and they see that you, they'll be loyal to you. If you give them your time, they'll give you your loyalty. Uh, whether it's me, the colonel, the drug dealer, or the gang banger, whoever makes them feel appreciated in trying to achieve their goals, that's who they're going to emulate. Really what we want is for every individual to have the ability to make healthy choices. That's the way I would phrase it. We want everyone to have the ability to make healthy choices. To get there, I think it's, to paraphrase a song, a long and winding road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I think I might just conclude by saying that there's a, there's a famous saying in medicine that the secret of caring for the patient is to care for the patient. Well, I would say the secret of caring for America is to care for Americans.